Greetings to you all. My name is Dr. Foxweed, and today we shall discuss a curious woman of Greek mythology, a Deonyra, a woman that managed to bring about the death of the mightiest hero of Greece, Heracles. Heracles, the husband of Deonyra, seemed unstoppable. He could club giant snakes to death, he could wrestle a lion and wear its skin as a trophy. But it was one of the great ironies of antiquity that it was ultimately a woman that led to his death, his wife, Deonyra. Deonyra hailed from the warlike land of Atolia, the daughter of King Aeneas. In ancient Greek, Deonyra's name actually means manslayer, which may suggest that originally her character was a female warrior, rather like the Amazons, who were often called Antionerae, which in Greek means something like women that face men in battle. Certainly we do hear from some traditions that Deonyra could drive a chariot and knew the art of war. The story goes that Heracles won Deonyra's hand in marriage by defeating another rival suitor, a shape-shifting river god named Achelous. Not exactly a rival in the looks department. Anyway, after the marriage, the couple moved to the land of Trachus, but needed to cross a river to get there. So a centaur named Nessus offered to carry Deonyra across the river. But being a dirty old centaur, he tried to ravish her, until Heracles shot him with a poisoned arrow. In revenge, the dying horseman gave some malicious advice to Deonyra. He said that the blood in his arrow wound could be used as a love potion, and if Heracles were ever unfaithful to Deonyra, she could win him back with this potion. And so the princess kept this centaur blood in storage at Trachus for many years, and not knowing that it was in fact a terrible poison. The disaster that would follow is famously told in the Greek tragedy of Sophocles and the women of Trachus, a play that fortunately survives today. At the play's beginning, Heracles has been absent for many months battling monsters and men, but his men have returned to Trachus with some women he has captured as prisoners of war including a noble woman from Euboea named Ayale, who Heracles has fallen in love with and intends to keep as a concubine alongside his marriage. When Deonyra suspects this, at first she is calm, but the realization soon sets in. Heracles is in love with a younger woman. From desperation, she decides to resort to love magic to win him back, an idea that she acknowledges is shameful to the women around her. Keep this well hidden amongst yourselves alone. In secret, you can do shameful things and will never fall into disgrace. And so Deonyra decides to use the love potion she's kept aside, and uses it as a dye for a robe that her husband can wear. Now, as we have seen in an earlier video, a Greek love magic was a rather dangerous affair, and here it is no different. Heracles ends up in a terrible agony as the robe birds into his skin with the centaur's poison. A Deonyra herself, horrified at her actions, would end her life with the sword. Heracles would later end his own life on a blazing pyre, so the couple would both die tragically. But one question has lingered on for some time. Was the poisoning truly an accident? Was perhaps a Deonyra seeking to hurt Heracles for rejecting her love for a younger concubine? In 1927, a Spanish Jesuit argued that the poisoning in the play was deliberate. Deonyra was truly a manslayer, as his article title declared. He argued that the audience of the Sophocles play would have recognized Deonyra as a dangerous warrior of the earlier traditions. What's more, he said, the stage of Greek tragedy wasn't exactly lacking in violent and jealous women that reacted poorly to infidelity, like, say, Medea. Deonyra was therefore no exception, as much as she was better at hiding it. This view is fascinating, but not at all popular among scholars. Most today would accept that Deonyra was irresponsible to resort to dangerous love magic, but there's no direct evidence in the actual Sophocles play to suggest that Deonyra was acting out of ill intent. It seems that she was simply desperate and made a foolish decision. But this in itself is still interesting and may well reveal some ancient Greek biases towards women. Edith Hall once pointed out that in Greek tragedy, women that make dodgy decisions are often unsupervised by men. 
Aristotle, she points out, thought that a woman's capacity to make decisions had no authority. And this very Greek view of women as bad decision makers may well explain the clumsiness of Deonira's actions in the play. That concludes our discussion on Deonira. Whenever you next give your loved one coffee with the wrong milk, remember her mistake. We do not always give our loved ones what we think we are giving. A class dismissed. And thank you once again to our patrons on Patreon.